Hello, and welcome to Good News Rhode Island, the show about Rhode Island and all the people and places and events that make Rhode Island a great place to live and that build our communities and keep us strong. Today we're going to be talking about something that we eat that's good for us, and a lot of people say ooh, and a lot of people say wow, um, but uh, we're going to be talking to the Rhode Island Mushroom Company. They're here from Kingston, Rhode Island, and uh, Bob DiPietro and Mike Halleck are here uh, to talk with us about their business, Rhode Island Mushrooms, and what we can do with mushrooms to cook. So thank you for watching, and we hope if you like this show that you will watch it on YouTube as well. Welcome. Thank nice you. to have you here. It's a pleasure. Um, how do people get Yeah, we it's that's it's interesting. There's a, there's a couple of different factors that go into growing mushrooms. Well, there's several, but the most important are strain, which we have a lab that where we actually work on all these different strains, and we're constantly managing uh, and essentially selecting for different traits that we would prefer to have um, in these mushrooms. So that's one major factor. The second major factor is the grow rooms and controlling those and keeping them at certain levels. So in actuality, each of these mushrooms requires different conditions to grow. So uh, it maintain, it, we essentially have, 
big HVAC systems, humidification systems, and computers that control all that. Okay, but you type into the computer, so you are basically a lab experimenting and then putting things out for larger pro production, and then you yeah, so harvest them and take them places. Yeah, the goal is that you need to trick the mushrooms into thinking it's either or the spring or fall when it's time for them to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we create the environment that would be out in the forest in the spring or the fall, where it's, you know, it's, uh, you have daylight and you have nighttime. So that the uh, there are lights in the grow rooms that are on twelve, they're on for twelve hours and then off for twelve hours. So we're recreating an environment that they would normally grow in in the wild. Are all these uh, all these mushrooms found in our woods in Rhode Island? No, um, many of these mushrooms are not. In actuality, none of them are. Uh, this mushroom here, this is maitake. Um, many. It, uh, people in Rhode Island actually would just refer to this as a senorita mushroom because we have a similar strain in, in Rhode Island. We actually, it's, a, it's an amazing mushroom that we sell the wild version of um, in season. But that mushroom is actually a strain that we've, we've taken in from China, uh, mostly because of its delicate nature. It has a much tighter cluster. It's much more delicate, and the high-end restaurants prefer that. Um, I have heard that the Chinese believe that mushrooms are the core of good health, as well as uh, some, some particular types of honey. Uh, but uh, I've heard that there is a lot of ancient wisdom that tells us that mushrooms are really good for us, body, mind, and spirit. Mm. The, the, there, there has been a lot of anecdotal evidence about the health benefits of, of mushrooms for millennia, actually. But uh, right now, there are clinical trials going on all over the country and all over the world, uh, primarily funded by the uh, large uh, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies. And what they've found is that certain mushrooms, particularly the piopini and the maitake, are uh, very helpful in combating uh, cancerous tumors, prostate cancer. Uh, they're helpful with diabetes. And what the Eastern medicine has known for, for many years is mm -hmm. now being proven in, in the laboratories here in this country and around the world. Many years meaning centuries, which is centuries, kind of yes, interesting. Centuries, yes, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these um, might be used for what? If we look at these closely, they're very beautiful. Oh, they're lovely mushrooms. They're, they're very easy to prepare if you... Oh, they just break they off? They just break right off. You can either break them into, into florets like this and roast them in the oven at 375 for about half an hour, just sprinkled with some extra virgin olive oil, or you can just pull them apart like that and saute them. So they're very simple, very delicious. They have a very uh, uh, meat-like quality to them, very rich tasting, and they're also very good for you, high in antioxidants and delicious at the same time. I use a lot of mushrooms for um, omelets. Yes, mm -hmm. these are particularly good. And eggs. they really wake you up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the things to keep in mind when you cook mushrooms, and I think a lot of people make this mistake, is they undercook mushrooms. Mm. Um, a really uh, big factor when you're cooking mushrooms is to make sure that you get them nice and brown, and you'll bring out that nutty flavor that they offer. Um, that's one of the first things I learned. I always ate them undercooked before I started doing this, and Bob's an amazing chef, and Bob was able to help me with that. And you know, many of these varieties, the golden oyster, the maitake, all of them really taste much better when they're well cooked. Mm. Okay, so say your recipe again. You cook them for how many minutes in the oven? Uh, about uh, 30 minutes at 375 to 400. Oh my gosh, I'd never do that, that poor little thing. Mm. But anyway, it, so I now I've learned is, something. It, what happens is the outside becomes crisp, uh, crispy and the inside is almost creamy. Uh -huh. And the juxtaposition of uh, taste and texture is just wonderful. So you put this on a plate with fish or something? Uh, I, would, I would probably pair that with more with a meat dish because a of its deep dish? rich flavor. Uh, uh -huh. With fish, the golden oysters are very nice. I'm much more delicate delicate flavor. Okay, why don't we talk about those, the golden oysters. Yeah, those are native to Southeast Asia. They, they don't grow in this area naturally. Uh, they're extremely delicate. They don't travel well, which is why you don't see them much. But you can see how delicate the cap is. So they're actually very delicious and uh, they, The cap curves too. under. Yes. That's the, when, once the cap starts straightening up and, and goes up, that's the mushroom that's past its prime. That's when it's putting, putting out all of its spores. Uh -huh. So we, we catch it just before it begins to turn up. So these were just picked this morning, as a matter of fact. And um, so what, did, what would you use this for if you got a plateful like this at your house? I would just chop it all up 
and uh, just saute it. Add a little bit of uh, garlic and fresh herb at the end, a touch of salt. Uh, when you're cooking with mushrooms, particularly with something as delicate as the, the golden oyster, use less salt, less garlic, less herb than you normally would because you don't want to mask the intrinsic flavor of the mushroom itself. Okay, um, I make a lot of risotto. Would that be very good in risotto? That is good in risotto, but my favorite for the risotto are the piapini. These are okay. deep, rich. Just smell that. It is very, good. very deep, rich, mushroomy flavor. And simple to prepare, you just bring your knife down the stem and slice it thinly and saute that first and get it nice and brown in olive oil. Then throw the caps in at the end. And then take them out of the pan and, be, and make your risotto and throw, throw the cooked mushrooms in probably uh, before the last two or three ladlefuls. Very short, right, very short time before you're finished. Exactly. The piapino is a variety of mushroom that actually we're offering now in retail packages and those will be available in all the stores. But the piapino specifically have not really been available. Uh, many people hadn't seen them, and they're one of our favorite varieties. Mm. Um, it's funny, m most of these varieties, the, most of the maitake, the gold oyster, piapino, I don't, there really wasn't really anywhere to buy them for a long period of time. Mm. Most people on the, there were farms growing them on the west coast, but that's kind of where we fit in. We, we kind of took over for the east coast doing the same thing. Okay, vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Have you made vegetarian dishes with any of these? Yes, but most of the dishes, in fact, the most of the time when I eat mushrooms, they are vegetarian dishes. I, uh -huh. I, I use them as a source, a source of protein as well as flavor. Um, so what have you made? Oh, I cook mushrooms probably six <laughs> nights out of seven, so. <laughs> well, um, people might like to know what to do with mushrooms. I mean, I've said um, you can put them with meat, obviously. Um, you can put them in broth. You can put them in soups. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what kinds of vegetarian? Obviously a stir fry with what other vegetables? Uh, you know, it does depend on the mushroom. You know, something like the piapino, you could use with uh, uh, a saute with Brussels sprouts. Uh, mm. So that would be very nice because you've got that. And, and again, brown them nicely. Brown the, you know, it, it, the difference between a, a Brussels sprout that's been nicely uh, browned and sauteed and just steamed is night and day. Yes. Because you get that caramelized flavor. Right. Well, you, you combine those two flavors with the mushrooms and the, and the Brussels sprouts. It's absolutely The maitake, I do this recipe all the time. I actually will roast carrots. Mm little baby carrots and yeah. maitake together and what it does you get the umami richness of the mushroom and the sweetness of the carrot and it's an amazing combination. And then you use butter or oil? Just olive oil. So olive ge oil. generally speaking I mean butter's nice olive oil de tends to be I don't know I, I like it a lot more with mushrooms. It, de it depends on the dish sometimes right. when I'm, um, I, I like uh, I eat a lot of pasta, obviously, uh, <laughs> and I find particularly uh, egg pasta has a real affinity to, uh, with mushrooms. And uh, when I'm when I'm sautéing the mushrooms and I and I toss the pasta in at the end, I usually add a you know a little pat of butter just to make it a little give it a little richness, bring the sauce together. Sure. But uh, you can't. You, it's not it's not good to cook mushrooms in butter because by the time the mushroom is cooked, the butter will have burned. Uh huh. So always, you know, start them in olive oil. If you want to finish with a pat of butter at the end, that's fine. There's no harm in eating undercooked mushrooms. Though. No. I mean, well, having done it for years, well, there's, obviously. There's no harm in it. However, there's something to be keep in mind. A lot of people do eat raw mushrooms. Something about mushrooms that many people don't know is that, just like celery, they're a negative caloric food. So if you eat them and do not cook them, you're actually b burning more calories than the than you would be provided mm -hmm. by digesting them. Uh huh. So yeah. they're they're not they're really not. They're better when cooked. You actually it releases all the nutrients. Mm. Um, Your body can't metabolize the nutrients unless the mushroom is cooked. Sure. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've undercooked them for years <laughs> and survived, <laughs> but now I've you. learned. Yeah, now I've learned. <laughs> okay. We're looking at this great behemoth here. Um, I think you need to describe it. I'm talking. I'm feeling it, and I have to say, it feels just like a mushroom. So this is a. Composite block is what they call it. So this is made from sawdust, millet, uh, which is a seed, uh, a few other kind of proprietary things. And what happens is we actually inoculate this block. So it is sterilized in a bag in an autoclave. And then we sterilize that, let that cool, and then we, in, in our lab, we open up that bag and toss in a little bit of spawn. And spawn is essentially a smaller version on grain of the mushroom of the mycelia. Toss that around, seal it, and then we let it grow. Uh, we let that grow for a couple of months, and then from there we get this. So eventually it will cover. It's actually all the way solid throughout. And what a lot of people don't understand is with mushrooms, what you what you know as a mushroom is actually the fruiting body of the organism of, of for instance, this is a shiitake, and the, the mushroom, 
organism is actually this block. Um, we can actually pull a little piece off and show you what's going on here. So if you see here, all that white. Put, hold it up for the scammer. Yeah. All that white that's going on, you probably have to zoom in. Um, but all that white mass is the mycelia. So that's actually what a mushroom is. And you can okay, see that. Can you define mycelia for us? Sure. Mycelia is uh, essentially a network that the organism creates. Um, and that is, as I said, is actually the organism, the mycelia. So that is um, just like any other organism. Like we may understand, like a root system in a plant is a good kind it. of comparison. Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah, you have to zoom in really close. But basically, mycelia are, are very are long strands of, of the mushroom organism that are intertwined. As a matter of fact, that's how they reproduce. They cross, and then where where the uh, cross happens, the mushroom actually pops up. But if you go in, if you're walking in the forest and you see a patch of mushrooms. Uh, what you're seeing, what you don't see, are the, is the mycelia, that, this mass that is underneath the leaf litter. So and you can't eat that? No. Actually, well, we wouldn't eat it. You could cook it, it into it. soup. Yeah, but pigs will. Pigs will eat it. Um, pigs would love it. Yeah, yeah. they would. There's, and there's, the, mostly we wouldn't eat it because there's sawdust in there. So, but all that white mass is edible, but the, the sawdust we wouldn't want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a matter of fact, when we're done with our blocks and also our bags, uh, they are turned into compost. It makes wonderful compost because the mycelia will actually grow through your compost pile and break down all the organic matter a lot more uh, efficiently than, uh, than just a regular compost pile. So you could actually sell that as well? We, we don't sell it. What we do is we, uh, we, we produce about 30 yards, cubic yards a week of this material. So you can imagine that's about the size of this studio. Right. Um, so we actually, what we do is we put that in a dumpster and then that's shipped to a local farm in Narragansett where they turn it into their soil, um, which it's a benefit, it's kind of mutually beneficial, so. It's a great thing, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, Rhode Island has so many farms starting and so mm -hmm. many businesses like this that mm -hmm. are farm-based. Um, isn't it a wonderful atmosphere to start a new business here? Absolutely. What have you found? Oh, very much so. As a matter of fact, Mike and I have, have, have remarked many times that if we had tried doing this some, uh, somewhere else, we probably wouldn't have been as successful as we have been. Uh, if we had tried this in Massachusetts or Boston, in the Boston area, we would not have, uh, we would not be at the place where we're at now. There's a tremendous amount of support that we get from the local um, restaurant community, from, from chefs. Uh, there's uh, the, the Rhode Island DEM is extremely helpful and very supportive, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great atmosphere to start a business. Uh, well, a yeah. agriculture is the largest growing uh, business in Rhode Island. Yeah. Who wouldn't have known? Yeah, right, exactly. Yes, it's I mean, wonderful. Yeah. We've, been, we've been afforded so many benefits. We, were, uh, we received a grant last year, the LASA grant. Uh, uh, from the state, yeah. Which, yep, which uh, helped us to expand our operation. Um, so we've had a lot of, you know, people, both Ken Ayers at the Ag Department, um, and many of the government officials that we've worked with have been so much more more than helpful. You know, they've allowed us to get to where we are. And well, but, uh, but a year and a half ago, we had one uh, part-time employee. Mm -hmm. We now have 12 people that work for us. Wow. We that's, expect that to double this year, too. Yeah. That's wonderful. And as the farm season grows, and most people don't think that much about it in the winter, but as it grows in the summer, mm. and you can go around to all these farm fresh stands, I imagine that the word will spread. And the other thing is that all the chefs using these are showing people how to cook. We had someone on recently who was talking about learning to eat different species of fish mm -hmm. because we're affecting the seas by eating only haddock or whatever. Mm -hmm. and and uh, so we need to learn to eat different species, and the chefs are helping with that by having uh, classes that actually allow people to taste new foods that they wouldn't have tried. I think it's very it's worth mentioning some of those chefs. I mean, like Nick's okay. on Broadway um, is have been one of our. I mean, they've they've helped us from the beginning. There's mm -hmm. so many. There's uh, the White Horse Tavern, Newport, Newport, Newport yeah. where I worked for ten years. So I was in the restaurant business before. Oh, I, I see. I was in the restaurant yeah. business for thirty years. So and I worked at the White Horse for ten. Uh -huh. So uh, White Horse is one of our oldest customers. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's it's. I mean, we've talked about this. We would not be where we are without all the support of the local restaurants, especially. Mm -hmm. um, the restaurant scene in Rhode Island is dynamic. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I like about the, the situation of Rhode Island is it's very, uh, very European in a certain sense. Uh, when you leave a large uh, European city, the first thing you hit on the outskirts of the city is farmland. 
because all the all the uh, all the uh, the food is grown locally for local consumption, and with the network of farms that we have here in Rhode Island and such a plethora of incredible chefs, that uh, uh, interaction has been absolutely outstanding. It's absolutely wonderful for us. Absolutely, that's actually what that's done is for us is created the ability because we started with the chefs, and then they've learned about our mushrooms, all the, the people in Rhode Island, and now that's allowed us to carry over to more of a retail environment. So that's allowed us to go from where we were just cook, just selling in Newport and Providence, now we're selling as far south as New Jersey. So we're in all the Whole Foods on the, on the Northeast. There's, there's chefs in New Jersey, too, I'm exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you use it for pizza? Yes. <laughs> yeah, these are great on pizza. Uh, uh, the maybe, caps or the, are you cut the whole them, thing, slice, yeah, slice them? It's very simple. You, you essentially bring your knife down the stem and stop with, uh, at the base where it's a little woody like the base of an uh -huh. asparagus. So I, I would just sort of break that off there. And you can slice it thinly on a diagonal or you can bring a knife down and just cut the stem into quarters and then saute it first and then throw it on the pizza before you put it in the oven and boy, it's pretty yummy. I have a funny little story about a pizza. Okay. okay. So one other aspect of our business is that we uh, we import and bring mushrooms in from all over the world as well as offer the varieties we grow. So we, week to week, probably have about 20 varieties of mushrooms that we sell. One of those varieties is a fungus. It's white and black truffles. So um, I, was, I was on uh, the Facebook page. I don't know if you know about white truffles go for about twenty-five dollars to $3,000 a pound. I know it's very expensive yeah, to buy so. truffle oil, and there probably <laughs> is one truffle for a gallon right. of oil. So I was on Bob's Facebook, I was on Facebook, and I saw a little post, and Bob had made a pizza, and it was completely covered with black truffles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hope you had good wine with it. I always have good wine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, the truffle was there, and the pizza was there, and it seemed, yeah. I, I had never had truffles on pizza before. And right. It was actually quite was it, it was it good? Was oh, I bet it was. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you invited all your friends. <laughs> no, I didn't actually. I didn't. <laughs> so as a chef, you know what you're talking about when right. you go in to see, and as a, are you a biologist? Or? So huh. I, <laughs> um, I am, I've always been interested. I went to school out at Evergreen State College for a year and studied, oh, studied, so studied microbiology. Oh, your daughter went there? Yes. It's, it's, I love it out there. But actually, what happened was I transferred to Berkeley College of Music. So I'm a, um, I come from, I graduated from I Berkeley. Know, I know. So you sing for them. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, right. That's why they're so beautiful. You know? I talk to the people. Um, so my history, my history is actually pretty interesting. I, I was in the music business. I worked at Columbia Records in New York um, for several years before I got a little burnt out from the mu music business and I moved to Rhode Island and started working in the farm industry. Uh, now I'm in two bands and I tour constantly and also Bob and I run the company. So I come from the music world, but I've always had a fascination with science. So as many people may think of farming as a, you know, not necessarily very science, you know, scientific, mushrooms are very specifically extremely, there's so much science necessary to, to cultivate mushrooms. So they've always kept my interest and that's something that I've, um, I feel lucky to be a part of because mm. having that, having something like that that keeps my interest is, is just, I mean, I, I never found it for, for many years, and now I have, so. Well, maybe you'll have your band play at uh, 141 Fairgrounds Road sometime. Oh, we have. <laughs> <laughs> we can all come down and, and taste pizza yeah, and exactly. listen to the band. How yeah. about that? And that serenade like the mushrooms party. at the same the time. The serenade the mushrooms well, at the same it's, time. It's funny, because I play in jam bands, um, and like Fish or The Dead and things like that. And my I take sometimes the van will be with us, and uh, you'll see. The mushroom logos. We've actually had um, a lot of hippies put post pictures of our of our van <laughs> on our Facebook page. It's been kind of funny. So, uh, but these don't make you high. No, they do not. No matter what you try to do, they just make you healthy. Exactly yes. right. We get that question. Healthy all and the happy. Time. Healthy because mm -hmm. they taste so good. Okay. Well, I want to congratulate you. Um, any other suggestions that you have before we close? Appetizers, potpourri, garnishes. The the best thing to, with mushrooms is that you know. Uh, at our farmers markets, we'll sometimes have 14 to 16 varieties of mushrooms there, and it can be kind of daunting. And uh, we spend yes. most of our time uh, teaching people how Educating. to cook them. Yeah. Right. Mm. The, but the, the main thing is, just don't be afraid of them. They're you know they're just like any other mushroom. You chop them up, saute them, or roast them. Yep. And uh, don't be afraid of, of uh, at, at what it, 
about what it looks like or what uh, the taste is wonderful. Put a nice brown sear on it, and you will find a, a new world of Let's mushrooms. Let's be specific about that. The mushrooms that we cultivate, because there's, uh, we want to make sure that people aren't going out in the woods and oh, harvesting. Yes. Okay, yeah. why don't you talk about that? Because you just told me a really interesting story before oh, the show yeah, yeah. Uh, about someone who came up to you and said, "Look at this mushroom," and showed you a picture, and it turned out that she was sick for four hours and didn't Violently, give it to her friend, yeah. her her family. Yeah, she, uh, this this lady had, uh, came up to me at a farmer's market and she showed me a picture of a mushroom. We said, well, we, we can't really identify uh, mushrooms via pictures. But I said, well, I hope you didn't eat it. And she got this sheepish, uh, sheepish look on her face. And I said, no, tell me you didn't eat it. And she said, well, I had it all chopped up on my cutting board and I had some garlic and some fresh herbs. She said, I just tried a little, little piece of it. And she said, was violently ill for four hours. I'm violently ill. And it turns out it, it, it was one of the most poisonous mushrooms in the world and she would have killed her whole family. So don't go out in the woods and pick mushrooms and think they're they're okay because another it's another very aspect that to keep in mind is uh, there's a lot of immigrants that come here from other countries, and many of our varieties resemble some of the edible varieties from other parts of the world. However, they are not the same species, so there are things that you need to keep in mind. We've heard of many people coming in from Europe, especially, and then finding uh, essentially in Amanita there's a variety called the death cap, and which is very very deadly. And as, as the name implies, and uh, there's a variety in Europe that looks very similar to that. So people will go in the woods and assume that it's the same variety, but it's not. And uh, so we've heard lots of stories about this. So leave it to the experts with this, uh, mm -hmm. with the mushrooms. I, I wish we were multilingual because that's a really important message. Mm -hmm. If you're out foraging, stick to the dandelion greens. Don't yeah, use the mushrooms. Exactly. So there My are experts in Rhode Island that you could learn from. However. Um, and if, if you're interested in that, you could contact, contact our website, and we could point you in the right direction. However, um, unless you have expert training, I would suggest not getting involved with wild foraging. Yeah, that's an old wives' tale. My, grand, uh, my grandfather used to hunt, used to get my wild maitake, and he'd bring it in. And uh, there was an old wives' tale that if you put a, uh, a dime into the water that you were blanching the mushrooms in, as long as it didn't turn black, the mushroom was edible. That's not true. <laughs> okay, so there's Just really no way to test them except getting sick. Well, the, or not eating not at all. Not, yeah, unless yeah. you know exactly what it is, you don't eat it. Yeah, you so. just, we just we do not eat mushrooms you harvest in the well unless you have an expert identify, identify them for you. Okay, let's go through these again. This is golden. Golden oyster. Golden oyster. That's maitake. Maitake, as a matter of fact, means happy dance in Japanese. Because happy dancing. Th th because they used to dance. They used to dance when they found them. Aha. Uh -huh. They were worth their weight in silver. Oh, they, oh that's wonderful. Yes, because mm -hmm. they were they're, they're, uh, they, they were used only by the shoguns for uh, medicinal purposes. So that uh, uh -huh. it was something the peasants never ate. They always sold it uh -huh. in order to make money. They weren't very smart. Then. These are piopino mushrooms. Okay. Uh, they're called that because in Italy they grow under poplar trees, and piopo is Italian for poplar, and piopini means little poplar. Okay. And these are blue oyster mushrooms, probably one of the mo most versatile mushrooms that uh, that we grow. Uh, very rich, very meaty. They will hold up well in a soup or a stew. Uh, really quite good. They're beautiful. Okay, and these guys. Those are the shiitake. Shiitake. And so those are available um, in stores, but only buy Rhode Island mushrooms, <laughs> and you will all be happy, exactly. I'm sure. Exactly. All right, well, thank you, Mike and Bob, for coming to visit oh, us. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Um, we really had a good time, Great. and I'm sure I learned at least how to cook them, if not how to find them. And thank you for watching Good News Rhode Island. We'd love to have your feedback at goodnewsri um, at gmail.com. We would love to have you watch our YouTube selections of the various shows that we've put on before, and we'd love to have your comments. Thank you for watching, and I'm sure that there's good news in your community. Probably you're helping to make it.